All right, so Wasteland 2. Um, man, I've been waiting for this game for a while. It's been on uh, available on early access for like, I don't know, like maybe a year now or close to a year. Um, but I wouldn't touch it uh, on early access because uh, with a game like this where it's like really story based, um, I don't want my initial impressions of a game like this to be uh, that of an unfinished product. So, uh, so I stuck it on my wish list and I waited for it to come off uh, of early access, which it did today. Um, so, Wasteland uh, Two. If you're unfamiliar, Wasteland came came out uh, like way back in the '80s, um, and it was uh, originally intended to have two sequels. Neither of which happened. However, one of the two sequels um, was going to be developed by Interplay, and everything from that sequel ended up forming the foundation for what would become Fallout. So Fallout 1 and 2 uh, very much owe their existence to Wasteland, um, and now we get Wasteland 2, which is uh, in itself very much a throwback to Fallout 1 and 2. Uh, so if you loved, and, and Fallout 1 and 2 are some of my favorite, not only not only just some of my favorite role-playing games ever, but just my, some of my favorite games ever. Um, you know, Fallout 3 is is great, but it's really its own, it's so different that it's really its own kind of thing. Um, and so Wasteland 2 is very much like what the first two Fallout games were. Uh, you know, isometric post-apocalyptic, turn-based, tactical, uh, you know, squad-based. Uh, quite a bit of humor, actually. Um, I wasn't expecting that from Wasteland 2, uh, but the, but it does have a great sense of humor. Um, so I just started playing today. I played once. Uh, it didn't go very well. I got annihilated, but it, uh, it taught me a little bit about the game. So first, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you that the way to play this game, in my opinion, uh, is to let the game teach you how to play it through trial and error. It's kind of how I played XCOM. Uh, Enemy Unknown, when it came out, was, uh, you know, I just put it on a hard difficulty, and, you know, yeah, so for like the first 10 or 15 times or whatever, um, I got demolished. But every time, I got a little bit further and learned a little bit more about the game. Uh, so that's how I'm approaching Wasteland 2. So I played it once, uh, you know, and, and the other thing is here, I'm going to go ahead and get into new game. The other thing that it taught me is that you are going to live and die by the squad that you create. So the uh, first thing you do is you get to this screen. It's going to give you a whole bunch of pre-made stuff. Uh, I don't do that. I'm going to make I'm going to make custom guys. Uh, so hopefully I can get through this pretty quickly. So... Uh, I am going to start with my leader. I'm going to give him some decent charisma, a little bit of speed, coordination, and we'll say awareness. And then he's going to rock uh, assault rifles. What else? Okay, and then uh, he's going to be my negotiator. We're going to go with hard ass. See, you have three options uh, for dialogue uh, specific skills you have hard ass. Uh, if you want to be a dick to people, kiss ass, uh, pretty self-explanatory, and smart ass. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, the silver tongue, uh, but but we're going to go with hard ass. Um, and what else do we want him to have? Leadership, definitely. Put some leadership here. Uh, leadership basically gives like an uh, AOE buff. And finally, we will let him. Hmm. Oh, brute force. And I'm gonna save. I think I'm gonna save perception for my sniper. So in that case, demolitions. All right. So once you've allocated your skills. You get to uh, play with your character now. This is actually a pretty neat system because uh, in in a lot of these uh, isometric RPG type games, you can 
customize your character to a degree, but then you have to pick from one of these pre-made portraits. And while the pre-made portraits are, uh, Gordy, this is funny, this is actually my, uh, my dude from last game. Um, while the pre-made portraits are great, you almost feel like restricted, like in that you have to make your actual character look like that. Instead, uh, once you've crafted your guy, let me see here. I wanna, I'm gonna make the same kind of guy. Where's my handlebar mustache? There we go. It's creepy looking fucker, huh? Uh, torso. There's actually a lot of options. It's pretty cool for uh, for customization here. So yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Let me go look at my other guy. Very similar. We got foot legs. Give them. I'll give them pants with like the cod piece. Uh, and then you can do things like size. I'm gonna keep my guys kind of average. Keep him pasty white. Change the sky. This really has to do with your uh, your your snapshot now. Wait till he looks over in my direction a little bit and plow. See, there you go. Now that is the uh, the icon that's going to show up every time, um, you know, you're in dialogue or uh, conversing, which is great because it looks exactly like the character model. Make him one. He will be atheist. He's going to smoke coffin nails, and we'll leave him as American. Uh, you can fill out a biography. I'm not going to bother at this particular junction. Now, we will make a sniper. So we want coordination, awareness, and luck. Because we want that crit chance speed. Sniper rifles, perception, outdoors. We'll go with that. Randomize. See what kind of crazy shit we get. That's kind of cool. I want a different, I want a different head. Though. There, had, there was a hood. There we go. And give her a lighter pack because she is a sniper. For a really slutty outfit if I wanted, but I want her to have that's actually kind of cool, but it doesn't make any sense for a sniper. So, yeah, but uh, as you can see, there are a lot of options. Um, I definitely recommend, hmm, I definitely recommend making your own dudes because I feel like in a game like this, uh, where they you know, your, your squad mates. I'm gonna live and die by your decisions. I feel like you'll be a little bit more invested than if you've sat and made them yourself. All right, everything I gotta figure out. There we go. We'll do that. And then legs. No, we're not gonna do a skirt. There you go. That looks good. Change the sky up. Snapshot. Good. Come drop McGillicuddy. She is. 23. Be a chic. Doesn't smoke. And she will be obviously Eric. Good stuff. Alright. Now, I need. Um, I need a doctor. So first thing we're going to do, and uh, here's a tip for you, because the first time I played, I really fucked this up. And this and this speaks to uh, what I said earlier about uh, living and dying by the squad that you pick or make. Um, so I made a doctor, and all I took was the surgeon skill, thinking, uh, you know, surgeon has got to be better than a field medic, right? So I figured, you know, if you... You know, you can take the field medic for, you know, and it, and it even says the skill will help you patch up your friends just enough to get them to a real doctor. So I read that thinking, well, fuck, you know, if that's the case, why don't I just make a real doctor? And so I roll a surgeon. But here's the thing. Uh, the surgeon can use trauma kits to uh, 
pick up people that are knocked down. So I had one guy get shot and he was on, on the ground bleeding out. He was going to die. The surgeon was able to pick him up and save him from dying. However, then that guy had no hit points. He had like one hit point left and the surgeon was unable to heal him. Uh, and every time I tried, the game was like, the game was literally like, what's he going to do? Cut him until he feels better. Um, so only a field medic can use the dressings that actually increase health. So for my doctor this time, he's going to be both a surgeon and a field medic. And then with his last little bit of skill, he's going to know how to handle... Actually, no, not a handgun. We're going to go with shotguns. He's going to be a shotgun doc. Um, and with that, I'm going to bump his intelligence up. Because why not? We're going to get a speed up because we all want him to be able to get to, uh, get to, oh no, not his strength, his speed. Because uh, his speed will increase um, how far he can move uh, per action point in combat. And so we want him to be able to get across the battlefield to pick up guys that have been fucked over. Uh, he doesn't need to be strong. He does, in fact, need to be somewhat coordinated, though. Or does he need to be? Yeah, we'll, we'll make him lucky. Alright. Doc Bonefat. It's 35. He's Christian. Indian. Doesn't smoke. Male. Random eyes. So I get a guy that looks vaguely Indian. But again, you can see by the, uh, the randomized, there's some pretty cool combinations here. There we go. That makes no sense. I'll just darken his skin tone. I guess that's as dark as it gets. And he's wearing a fucking nun's head thing for some reason. Or, or he could be wearing what looks to be like a corset. Uh, no, no, we will go. Where are we gonna go? A tie, maybe. Wait, what do we have here? There we go. Can I get him a skirt? Perfect. And here we are, ready to go with Doc Bone Fat. Take a new screenshot, click, click, no, we get a... click, click, there we go, perfect. Uh, and then last but not least, I want, just for shits and giggles, a melee brawler. So we're going to give speed, coordination, that's what it's doing for me. Initiative, a chance to evade, yes. So we'll do that. Bladed weapons, perhaps? Bladed weapons along with... I gave my sniper perception an outdoorsman, right? So we will let my... Do I want lock picking? I guess I want lock picking. An alarm disarming? No. Lock picking. Boom. Alright. She will be T Bone. She's 18. She'll be fucking Jewish. Why not? Doesn't smoke. European. Holy shit, that is a nightmare in a can. Yeah, fuck it. We'll do that. Boom. <laughs> Alright, and so there we go. Now I have a squad. You're ready to get into the game on the season. Yeah, why not? You can, I all, I believe you can also uh, export your guy. So if you, you can make a guy that you particularly like and you can export him and then use him when you inevitably get destroyed by the game.
All right, so at this point it plays a little cutscene. It is shitty. I'm actually gonna see. Okay, I skipped it. It's a really shitty cutscene. Uh, the voice acting is very questionable. It's no. It's certainly no Ron Perlman. War. War never changes. Um, it is what it is. Don't let it color your perception of the game, because uh, it's just not indicative of the overall quality of the game. I feel. All right. So once you're in game, uh, pretty pretty standard stuff. I appreciate you coming to Captain Ace's retirement party. We hardly knew the man. Appropriate too. Seeing as how investigating his death will be your first duty as a desert ranger. Of course it will. Okay. Uh, so as far as I've gotten in the game, all of the dialogue from other people, not from your characters, obviously, uh, is voiced over, which is really cool. Now, I have no idea if this is just going to fall off a little bit later in the game. Uh, or, you know, and they'll just, and you'll just start having to do reading, but at least for the beginning part, everything is voiced over. So that was fairly impressive. Um, the UI is great. The UI is, uh, you know, fairly reminiscent of, you know, post-apocalyptic Fallout style. Um, the, the whole thing is just going to feel like Fallout 1 and 2. Uh, a little bit more like Fallout 2 than Fallout 1. Um, so right then and there, if you love Fallout 1 and 2 as much as I do, this game is definitely going to be something you want to look into. Um, now, when you're talking, uh, you know, they during his dialogue, it'll highlight certain keywords. This is how you, rather than just giving you a list of questions to ask, this is how you ask questions. Uh, you highlight the keywords. Ace had been trying to locate a faint radio signal, which is late. See, now that just opened up a whole bunch more options for me to ask about. I'm just going to start talking a bit. You can, uh, it's all incredibly interesting and uh, important, etc., etc. Mission. Search the area where Ace's body was found. Ace's death must be. Yes, call in on your radio. Once you prove yourself, okay, so will be your new home. Consider this mission the final test of your training. If you succeed, you are welcome within our walls. If you fail, then you aren't cut out to be a desert ranger. We won't let you in. All right, so every so often, some of these, uh, you know, keywords will trigger uh, a, a potential response. Basically, a hard ass, kiss ass, or smart ass response. Um, so you want to make sure that the character with that trait, like the only, uh, so Cupcake's the only character I have that I that I put any of that dialogue uh, skill into. So he has hard ass skill of one. So obviously, I'm gonna hard ass my answer. Um, and that's the other thing is like whoever's currently selected will actually be the one. Ugh, T Bone is fucking hideous. Uh, will actually be the, oh did I seriously spell his last name wrong? Fucking Midgraw. Supposed to be Midgraw. Whatever he's gonna die very shortly anyway. Um, yeah, so whoever selected will be the one that's actually answering. Uh, I don't know if that changes anything other than the name above the actual entry. Regardless, here. The hard ass approach, huh? Yes, the hard ass approach. Well, you might get what you want from some folks in the waste through intimidation. All right, so obviously, this guy is not going to be intimidated, but out in the world, that would have succeeded. So, goodbye. Shut up. All right, so this is very much Fallout, uh, where it shows you the map. However, there's something else. There's this. Uh, Actually, a pretty cool travel mechanic. On top of that, um, take that shovel because why the hell not? Uh, so you can you can rotate the camera any which way, zoom pretty far out if you want to get kind of a tactical bird's eye view. It's about as close as you can get in. Um, this deal up here in the corner is your radio. Uh, you can call people. People will call you. Got, we're going to get tutorial bits popping up over here. Keywords. Logbook. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, you can either have your entire party selected and move them all at once. Or you can just individually select guys. Right click to move. Left click to interact with shit. Click. 
character inventory again. Every character has their own inventory, stats, and all that jazz. Um, and then you have a hop bar. So I actually didn't do this last time, but what does this do? Oh, I just literally smoke a cigarette. And that does. Fuck if I know what that does. I don't know. He just smokes a cigarette. Uh, I do question whether or not, like, if he hasn't smoked a cigarette for a while, he's going to start fiending for one. In which case, it would be in my best interest to, like, scavenge for cigarettes. I have no idea. But we'll see here. All right, so we're going to move these guys on out. Okay, Rook wants this thing, so just go over and pick it up. Great. Fucking goat flips out. Uh... Fuck you, goat. Bloody tuft of fur. Oh, all right. So Rook was not too happy. He said, "Why would you do that? I love that goat. You're jerks. Yeah, we are jerks." Um, so here's the, here's the thing. The game was going to give you a lot of really great exposition about events uh, over on this little um, news feed in the lower right hand corner. It's going to tell you it's your combat log. It's it's a lot of your dialogue. Uh, and it almost takes on like a dungeon master aspect in that, uh, you know, when you get into a certain area, it might explain to you what your characters see in a very kind of flavorful way. Uh, so you, you want to pay attention to it, but it's, it's going to be weird at first kind of remembering to look at it, uh, especially if you play MMOs and you get very used to just kind of ignoring the chat box, which would be in a very similar location. Uh, but you do want to try to remember to read it because, again, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of flavor, there's a lot of information, but also just even just the way that it tells you about the combat, you know, uh, Cupcake's bullets rip through Aberforth, uh, that apparently being the, uh, the goat's name, inflicting 10 points of damage, blasting it into chunks of steaming meat. Uh, there was at one point uh, in my last play... Uh, when my doctor fired a shotgun and it was like you the shotgun spray uh, you know rips through its target like an ejaculation of death or something like that um, but all in all it's definitely worth trying to kind of pay attention down there and you'll see in a, in a minute that it, uh, that it that it's not even just optional it's kind of almost required Alright, so now Fallout, when you fast traveled, you pretty much just had the map and you selected where you wanted to go and then ran and then randomly you would run into random encounters and that kind of stuff. This is interesting because it's slightly different. Uh, it, it's copy that. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so what you have here is, if you look in the lower right-hand corner, there's a blue globe. That's actually your water supply. I have 60 out of 60, whatever, units of water. And the process of traveling ends up costing water, um, depending on where you want to go. So you have that sort of 2D map uh, which in which you record the locations of places and a lot of things you know if you come across um, if you're searching you might come across a note that talks about uh, a, a secret bandit hideout and it'll automatically be added to your map um, so it's kind of an interesting additional feature in regards to travel uh, in that it's in that it's 3d so that's always nice and pretty 
but also you have to worry about your water consumption now so I'm gonna travel over this way and we may come across an oasis along the way and oases are how you stop to replenish your water supply now I'm not gonna stop on the way over but on the way back I may have to <laughs> alright see so yeah we just found an oasis so I, I will be able to stop there to refill my water or I guess I can do it now thick whatever there it is I found an oasis I will fill everybody's canteen yes mmm delicious oh what is that shit I don't know what that is I'm not gonna go there I don't want to go back. I want to continue going here. I don't know what that is, but I don't want to. I don't want to find out right now. Ah, fuck. Okay, so random encounter. See dangerous. Ah, well, fuck it. We'll attack. And I will show you the combat, which I may just horribly lose. In which case, that's the end of the video. But at least you'll have seen the meat of the game. All right. So, where are these people at? Alright, so I see a raider cutter. That guy looks possibly dead. Also possibly dead. So I want to deselect. I want to make sure that my sniper gets to post up in good position here. I'm just gonna crouch. Oh, all right, so we triggered. That's fine. Yeah. Oh, shit. All right. All right, so T-Bone rolled first in initiative, which means you can see up here the uh, order of activation. So T-Bone gets to go, and then my sniper gets to go. So I can move her up. Wow, this guy's decked out in full armor, huh? Damn it. Uh, okay, so here's something else that's kind of uh, got an interesting mechanic. On top of, here are your action points in turn, some of the uh, pertinent information you're going to need, different things you can do, like aim for a headshot, stand, or whatever. But every weapon is going to have a uh, optimal range. Like, So if your character started here, the, the hunting rifle is just useless at super close range. You're not going to be able to hit shit with the rifle. Uh, but then you get into the sweet spot over here where everything that's in green is good. And then it starts to fall off again at, at super long distance. Um, and again, that tells you the maximum or the optimal uh, range is 5 to 23 meters. Uh, these little red dots are the various enemies that you can currently see and where they fall within your optimal range meter. So that's really handy for uh, just at a glance telling you what your, what your best target might be. So in our case, it's going to be him. I could... Oh, an ambush. From what I can tell, it, it basically... It's kind of like an overwatch. It, it puts your character into... Uh, like, not hibernate. It basically gives up your turn, and your dude lies in wait. And I think that the next time somebody attacks, you attack first. Like It's kind of like a counterattack. Let me see if I can pop that guy. Ooh, one shot at him. Snipers, uh, snipers are pretty beast. All right, not bad. So they had to use up all of their jazz moving, and he's just gonna cupcake McGraw howls with rage as a shot on a raider cutter goes wide, and I can't do anything, so I'll just end the turn. And move my doctor here. And see, he's got a shotgun, so he's got a spray. But actually, that's going to hit my own dude, too. That kind of sucks. Or, or maybe not, I guess. Wow. Kind of wrecked those guys. All right, all these fucking tooltips. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Delicious. All right. And then select the entire party again. And now I get to loot my shit. 
Yoink. Yoink, yoink, yoink. So that's nice too, is it just automatically cycles to the next uh, lootable object nearby. What happened here? Why did this have to happen? So again, they propped him up like some trophy. Um, so anything you're examining in the environment, you're going to see played out. Uh, this is not not really the best example. How do I get out of here? I'm looking for the node. There's like a oh, here it is. Okay, I see. It. This you have to get to this thing to travel. <laughs> Looks like he almost got away. Not quite. There we go. Exit this encounter. So that's combat in a nutshell. Again, it's turn-based, tactical. Uh, I love that sort of thing. If you love that sort of thing, um, you know, there you have it. View map. Travel. Yes, I want to enter the radio tower. Roger that, Echo One. When you reach the area where his body was found, give it a good going over. Folks that picked him up said it looked like he crawled there. Copy that. All right, so basically, I'm looking for this where the, the, some one of our ranger dudes got killed, and I gotta I gotta go find out what's up with that. Oh yeah, all right, and then so like this asshole. So he's kind of just, you know, smart ass level one required. So I don't even have the option to kiss ass or smart ass because I don't even I don't have a point in it. However, I can be a hard ass, in which case I threaten to eat his dog. Um, pretty decent experience for succeeding one of those. I would imagine if I failed it, we're talking about like immediately getting into combat. Um, overall, I feel like uh, waiting for this game to come out of early access and actually be released was the right move because. I mean, it's just it's a it's really well put together uh, in the admittedly limited amount of time that I've played it. Um, everything runs smoothly. All the systems work great. The uh, you know, I mean, it's not the prettiest game. It's it's functional. It's passable. Um, it's not going to win any next gen awards, but but everything works and it feels good and it feels like a finished product at least thus far. Uh, clearly, I can't speak to how good the story is, but um, I feel like the gameplay is solid enough. Again, if you like this sort of turn-based uh, tactics sort of gameplay as much as I do, um, then I feel like even if the story is kind of eh, uh, you know, it's it's still worth playing for that, you know, for the combat. Because, I mean, that's the meat of the game anyway. Um, but again, here you can see over here uh, another example of, like, I came over uh, into this area... And it just tells me about everything I see. Like near the creaking metal skeleton of the radio tower, you find the place where Ace began his last futile crawl for home. Grooves and scratches, and it you know tells me about the blood, but also the fact that some of the blood doesn't look human, and this and that. Uh, there was no indication otherwise and elsewhere on the screen that that this exposition had happened. Uh, you just kind of have to kind of keep one eye on your little news feed down here. Um, so yeah, so that is really the gist of it. I mean, I could, you know, I can keep playing, but it's, it's just going to show you, it's pretty much just talking and fighting. Oh yeah, and then there's some guy, apparently, tell him to shut up, that wants to kill the rangers, I don't know why yet. So yeah, uh... You know, in terms of play it or don't play it, I say play it, man. I think it's worth it. Uh, if, if you know, obviously you have to 
dig RPGs, but uh, it looks like a good one, and I'm really excited to kind of get into it. And I'm glad I waited for it to come off of early access. So to close it out, I'm just going to get into... Oh, this dog, by the way, is named uh, Barkmeat, which I, I have to assume is a bit of a uh, an homage to good old dog meat from the Fallout games. Um, so yeah, so to close this out, I'm going to start some shit. Oh! Oh, his head! Oh, that's too bad. Lucky crit. So who do I got? I'm almost wondering if... So I can push her for five. But then I don't have enough. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm still on the fence about having a melee. I mean, she does decent damage when she hits, but I'm I'm almost thinking maybe this game is just all about the ranged. Although, well, some of these guys, you know, I guess it really just depends on your situation because all of these guys are melee, so she's not at any great disadvantage in that she's being picked off from a distance. Oh fuck. Uh, okay, well, my weapon jammed, but also I noticed a little bit too late that I was uh, attempting to shoot at somebody that was inside uh, that was not within the optimal range. That's why the hit the hit was uh, so low. Um, I'm just going to move him away. And then Doctor with the shot. Enter. See with the hunt with the hunter rifle. Well, first of all, she's empty, so I have to spend some points to reload, and that's that. Not really selling your usefulness, uh, T-Bone. Holy shit! Well, that could have gone much better. Oh, so I have to unjam the rifle, and then I still can't shoot. I haven't quite figured this out, why my sniper only gets to move in a cross pattern. Holy shit, all of his arms came off and everything. Alright. Uh, stabby stabby? That actually turned out pretty well for just... Mumbles. One of these guys was named Mumbles. So that actually went pretty well for uh, impromptu combat for no reason. Oh, dog collar. Take all. Take all. Ammo, tobacco. Good stuff. So yeah, there you have it. Wasteland 2. It's out on Steam now. Um, it's a pretty good time, I gotta say. Uh, I'll probably do a follow-up or a, you know, maybe I'll do a written review on the website once I've played a little bit more. But, uh, okay, so one of my dudes is bleeding. That's what that is, I think. You know, there's caves to explore and and whatnot. Uh, the developers are saying 70 hours uh, to complete a single playthrough, assuming you. I assume that's if you just do everything and take your time and wander. Um, 
So for 40 bucks, I mean, if you get 70 hours of gameplay out of it, uh, that seems like a pretty good value to me. Um, and all the other, all the initial reviews and, and plays seem to be uh, seem to be on the positive side. So yeah, I don't know what else to tell you. Go play it. Um, all right, and that is it for me then. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope uh, if you pick up Wasteland 2, I hope you enjoy it as much as I am enjoying it. And uh, we'll see you next time.